have found so far the conservation of mass, conservation of mass, that took to the, the continuity equation, right? Now we have postulated the balance, the balance of mm, linear momentum, and we ended up with the Cauchy equation, local form of the linear momentum balance. Okay, let's go another step. Angular momentum balance. What is angular momentum? Let's start with a system of particles. We have a number of particles. Every particle has a momentum, okay? The momentum of this particle is the mass times the volume, okay? Now, this is a, this is a vector. We will, can consider the torque produced by this vector at this point. How do we obtain the torque, the, mo the moment? If we take moment of this force to this point, what do we have to do? To take the vector product of this vector, the distance to this point, times this vector. And this is what is called the angular momentum of this particle with respect to point O. It's just the momentum, the, mo the moment, the torque of the momentum. So this is obtained as, you know, the mass times the velocity, which is the momentum, just multiplied by the vector of position of this point, R, multiplied in vector product. So that's what we call the angular momentum, okay? Well, now let's consider this system of particles, and let's consider the forces on these particles, and the moment of every of these forces, the torque of every moment of these forces with respect to point O. So to obtain the moment, the torque, of every of these forces with respect to point O, we just sum the forces of every particle, we take the torque of every force, and then we sum for all particles, that is. So here is the expression. This is the expression of the external the moment, the external moment coming out from the external forces acting on the system of particles, okay? The external torque at point zero, okay? But now look, that we know that every force, every force at every point fulfills the second Newton's law. So the force at particle I is equal to the mass at the particle I times the acceleration of the particle I. So mass times differential of VI with respect to T. So nothing happens, I just replace that by that. And now I'm taking advantage of the second Newton's, of the, sec the, the, the other second Newton's law, okay? So, now I just express this integral as the difference of the differential of all the terms here minus the differential of this time here. There is another term here which should be the differential of mass. So, there is another term that should be R times differential of mass times V. But differential of mass, we know that is zero. So, I don't put it here. And I say that, taking into account that the mass is constant, this term can be expressed as the differential of this term minus this term here, which is the differential of that times the velocity times the mass. Okay? Now we realize that the, 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 the differential of the position vector with respect to t is times the velocity. So this is the vector product of the velocity times the mass times the velocity. So that's the vector product of two vectors, this, which is the velocity, and this, which is parallel to the velocity. So we are doing the, the vector product of two parallel vectors. What is the vector product of two parallel vectors? Zero. So this term cancels. So now, by these operations, we see that we can replace this by the material derivative of the sum. Okay? And now, what is that? Well, that is the sum of the angular momentum of every particle. So that is what is called, everything of that is what is called, the angular momentum of the system of particles. And this is a derivative with respect to t of the angular momentum of the system of particles. So, finally, what is that? That is called the second part of the Newton's law. The second Newton's law has the first part, force equal mass to acceleration, 
And the second part, which, is, which says that the external moment torque of the external forces on the system of particles, M, at a certain point O, is the variation with respect to time of the linear moment, the angular momentum of all particles, this, at the same point. In other words, it can be understood as a balance. We have an equality saying that it should be in balance. Both sides should be in balance. The value of the external torque on the system should be in balance with the variation with respect to time of the angular momentum of the system, both at the same point. So that's, this is nothing new. This is just a translation of the second part of the second Newton law in terms of the angular momentum. By the way, if the system is in equilibrium, the moment of the external forces is zero, and then this material derivative is zero, and for that we obtain that the angular momentum of a system of particles, which are in equilibrium, is constant along time, in an equilibrium system. If not, and that is a conservation of the angular momentum, if not, the more general principle is the balance of the angular momentum, the saying that the variation of the angular momentum is equal to the torque, to the external torque acting on the system of particles. Okay, that is for particles. What about continuum medium? We just extend this, uh, uh, this, this, this hypothesis, this postulate, for a finite number of particles to an infinite number of particles. So when we have infinite number of particles of infinitesimal size, which is a continuum medium. So, in that, time, in, that, in, in that case, the angular momentum will be expressed as the velocity times the mass, differential of mass, which is the momentum of every particle, times, uh, times when I say times, I mean a vector product, the position vector of the particle, which is, well, I, I use here the word R, but in fact I could also use X, the vector of material spatial coordinates, okay? So this is the expression of the angular momentum, the position vector dot product, uh, sorry, vector product of the density times the velocity integrated, and that is for one particle. If we sum for all particles, then we we'll take the total angular momentum, okay? So we extend that, say, we say this variation of the angular momentum, which be the material derivative of this volume integral, look that the, the, the domain of integration is the volume occupied by the particles, and that's going to be changed. So this is a changing uh, integration domain. So we say that the differential, this, this operation here, is equal to what? To the moment of the external forces acting on the, on the system. By the way, what is the moment of the external forces acting on the system? Well, if we consider that the, the body forces acting on a differential of volume and multiplied by the mass produces a force rho b, differential of b. If we want to obtain what is the moment, moment of these external forces with respect to the origin, then we have to multiply uh, r times rho b and sum by all points, okay? So this is the torque due to, body, to the external body forces. What are the surface forces acting on the boundary? Well we have to just multiply every external force, T, the traction, times differential of S, times, again, the position vector at the boundary and the, the sum at the boundary of the product of R, a vector product times T, sum of all points of the boundary, is the torque due to surface forces. So, now, just express that this is equal to this, in balance. The external moment to on, the, on, the, on the continuum medium is equally, at every time, at the variation at this time of the amount of angular momentum in the continuum medium. Okay? That's our hypothesis. Okay. Next step. Now do we do some operations. So this is what I have said. This, now we can understand, that this is the moment, the torque, the external torque of the body forces, this is external torque of the surface forces. And here, 
we have the expression of the variation, the, the rate of the angular momentum. Well, what is my, our goal? Now you can guess what I'm trying to do. I want to obtain a local equation of that. This is an integral equation, which is the tran mathematical translation of what I've said, the, the, the Newton's law, but in terms of moments, okay? So this is something that is nice, but it's not what I'm looking for. I would like to obtain something that can be localized. But for, be, for being localized, I need that all integrals are volume integrals, domain, domain integrals. If I have a boundary integral, then I cannot apply the localization process. So now I'm doing some effort in order to transform this integral on the boundary, on the surface, of the, of the continuum medium in something that is a volume integral. Well, what I do, I take that. Here, tractions. Now I apply t equal n times sigma. That's something that we know from, uh, from the, the chapter fourth. Some mathematical operations said that if you do that by, indicia, by indices, you said that this is equal we can just invert the, the order here, putting the sigma transpose here. So that can be expressed as r sigma transpose times n. This, this is a vector, so now I can also apply the <coughs> divergence theorem. And I have an integral on a volume of something times n, and I can replace that by this something, and where we have n, I put nabla. I keep the operator, in that case the dot product, and I change the integral on the surface by the integral of the, on, the, on the domain, on the, on, the, on the interior. And now I've changed this integral by these operations as a volume integral. By the way, also it can be proven, and you have that in the book, that this term that can be written by that some operations that are I mean, just look, that this, this should be done by indices to, to, to prove it. But it can be done, and at this time you should be able to do it, that this is equal to two ter the sum of two terms. One is the vector product of the position vector times the diversion of the stress, and the other time is a vector m. That vector m is a vector which has three components, but every component can be in turn expressed in terms of the stresses as the Levi-Civita, the permutation symbol, Aijk times sigma jk. You need that. There are two mute indices here. There is one talking index. So this is a vector, a component i of a certain vector. This vector is that one. Okay, so now we can replace that by that, but also the interior can be replaced by that. So let's do it. What we have here, this term here, this term here, I place here at the left-hand side, right? The, this term here is equal, by the way, also the material derivative of rho and something. But the material derivative of rho and something, by resorting to the Reynolds theorem lemma, can be written as the integral of rho times derivative of something. So now, now, I can express that this is equal to that by, by differentiating that, that's differentiated of the product, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first time the derivative of the second, but the derivative of the first is the derivative of the position with respect to time, which is the velocity, dot product of velocity times velocity, two parallel vectors, dot product of vector product is zero, so this term is zero, and finally, after all this, I can explain that derivative, the material derivative of the angular momentum as the integral of the product of the position vector, vector product, this term here. Okay? So I replace all these equations into the original equation here. So I have this equation that can be replaced by this equation, which is here. I just join the terms, this term here. Then I give that equation which is in here, that looks like that. And here, I've just placed the value of m. m, 
AIG gate, the ACMG gate. So I place that. Okay? And now, at the right hand time, at the right hand, hand time, uh, side, I have this term here. Okay? So that is exactly the same. I mean, is what I postulated is the angular momentum balance principle, but, I mean, rephrased, rephrased in that way by using some mathematical expressions. And now, that is the proof that is interesting. I can pass this term to that term here inside, because we you know we have r times something, here I have r times something, so I can pass to that inside, which you have here, with sine minus. The integral of the r times this term here, plus that vector m, over, over, over any subdomain of the pack of particles, is equal to zero for all parts of this domain and all times. Look, I have here that this is nothing else than the Cauchy's equation. Look, this term here is zero. Why is zero? Why is zero? Because, because of the, that equation here. That equation here says the divergence of sigma plus rho v minus rho a minus rho dvd is equal to zero. That is what I'm replacing here. So look, at the end of the day, this term drops. So the only that remains is this term here. So look, only this term remains. So finally, at the end of the day, all these operations, what happens is that the rep mathematical representation of the angular moment balance principle is that the integral of this vector is zero. And this would happen for all subdomains, so I can localize. So now the vector should be zero at all points. And look, the vector, vector looks like that. Every component is a vector. So there are three components. Every component of this vector has to be zero at all points. What are the components of this vector? No, look, this is the permutation ten tensor, you remember? This permutation sensor, you remember what is that? Is zero if any of the indices is the same. And is plus one if the index V and difference, they follow, they follow the clockwise sense, and minus one if they follow the counterclockwise sense, okay? So what is the development of this equation for I equal one? Is neglecting what, what which are different senses, different indices, we have one epsilon one to three times sigma to three, plus epsilon one, three, two, times sigma three, two, is equal to zero. All the other terms would involve repeated indices, indices here, and they should be zero. But look, epsilon one, two, three is equal to one. Epsilon one, three, two is minus one. So this is sigma two, three minus sigma three, two equals zero. So this is sigma two, three equals sigma three, two. Second equation of this, blah, 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 sigma 3, 1 equals sigma 1, 3. Third equation, sigma 1, 2 equals sigma 2, 1. So what do I obtain at the end of the day? That this angular momentum balance principle at the local part, when I localize the principle, leads to that this term is equal to the term, this term is equal to the term, this term is equal to the term. That is the symmetry of the stress tensor. When we studied the properties of the Cauchy stress tensor, we said it's symmetric, but we'll prove that in, 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 the, in the next chapter. Here's the proof. So the symmetry of the stress tensor is nothing else than the local form of the angular momentum balance principle. That looks like magic, no? But that's what is nice in continuum mechanics, that you have a same physics. You introduce mo the physics and then the equations that you have developed before, and then you obtain results. Results like that. The stress tensor is, at all points and at all times, the stress tensor is symmetric. And this is the local form of the angular momentum balance, balance principle. Okay?